of the Lord those who are watching me this morning allow the Holy Spirit to come and speak to you this morning as we are in the presence of God you may be tired of your life but just trust Jesus this morning praise the Lord it is so joyful for me to be with you all this morning and also, it is my joy to come to every one of you at your home you are watching. Please read a, a passage from the Word of God. Please turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count on myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Those who are listening to me wonder, what Pastor, are you lost? You, you read that last Sunday. But last Sunday, I could not finish the whole thought process because of the time. This is the second part of the last Sunday message. And I try to deviate from this to another about your high calling. But I could not do it. I had to continue with this. This morning I want to say this to you. Somebody is out there so tired of your life and say that I am so tired. I am not successful in my journey. Don't give up this morning. This is what came into my heart as I was standing there worshipping. If you are that person, I want to tell you this morning, just trust Jesus. There is a story that we read in the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 17 and 18. That's not my topic, but that came to me to tell you whoever that feeling that very tired of life and trying to give up. Don't give up because this man, he thought all the glittering is gold. He went after the world and you may be that one. But he found out that there's a loving father. So where did the Lord says in Luke's gospel chapter 15 verse 17 and 18. And he said to himself that why should I just be out here with the pigs eating the pig food? 
I am going to, I know my father's house, there is plenty. And I'm going to go to my father's house. And I was just standing here and thinking about that to tell you that this man did not just uh, walk slowly to his father's house. In my imagination, this came. He was probably running. Yeah. He was just running away from the pig pen. And he was running so fast because he knows that there is something ahead of him. He wanted to reach to that place in the father's house. And he knows that nobody going to stop me. I'm not going to think about what happened in my past. I'm going to just forget about the things that the bad things happened in my life. I am not going to think about the pig food that I ate. I am just going to run and run as fast as I can. Even if I lost my breath when running, I am going to my father's house and I'm going to ask him for forgiveness. But my father's house are plenty and he just started running. And to his surprise, when he came, his father was out there waiting for him with the arms wide open. The strong, loving arms were wide open for you this morning. And you just run to him this morning. As Paul said in verse 14, Philippians chapter 3, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So I would like to speak to you this morning about the second part of last Sunday's message. Reaching your goal, successfully reaching your goal. That's the subtitle of the message this morning. Paul is saying that I press toward reaching my goal. Our primary motivation must be the love of Jesus. Our primary motive in our life should be the love of Jesus. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, the Lord's Spirit come into your heart. Because the Bible says God is love. That born again child of God will be loving. Even when you are hated by others, you will love them. Because the love of God is overflowing. David says, my cup runneth over. And if your cup is containing the spirit of the Lord, no matter what the situation is, you will display the love of Jesus through your life. Let that love come out of your heart. Our primary motivation should be the love of Jesus to be displayed through our life. Finish line of eternity with Jesus must be our ultimate goal in life. Again, finish line of eternity with Jesus must be our ultimate goal in our life. Whatever we do in this world, in this earth, doesn't matter. If you can finish there. If you are a child of God, living like a holy life, but you are not enjoying the world and you are not enjoying the presence of God, you are the most miserable person in this world. Either you go there and enjoy, or you stay here and enjoy. No in between. You can put on a show, but you are unhappy. You can just act like you are holy, but you are still unhappy this morning. I want to remind you that if you just want to say, I'm going to give up, I am not going to be successful in my journey, I know. But the Lord's Spirit is telling you, don't give up, just go like that prodigal son. He is looking for honesty from your heart this morning. Yes, if you cannot finish eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever your goal is, it doesn't matter. Wasted our time and days. Reaching your goal takes a lot of discipline and determination in your life. Reaching your goal takes persistence. Reaching the goal that is set before you takes perseverance. A runner's focus is always on the finish line. If you are the runner, let your goal change from whatever you are doing today to the finish line, finishing eternity with the Lord Jesus. We must focus on Jesus as the goal and object of our faith. The race that you're running is the lifelong test of faith that you and I are experiencing upon the face of the earth. So that race you are running, test of faith comes, keep on running. Hebrew chapter 2 verse 1, therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. We are hearing word of God day after day, months after months, weeks after weeks. Yeah, yeah that's a good message. I remember when I was a young boy, I used to go to post office. My father left uh, India to come here when I was five years of age. I miss my dad when he left. I came home, I found my dad is not there. My mom, my old, older brother was there. And I felt so sad in my heart because they, my mom told me, dad went too far away from here. He will not come back for many years. I didn't know what, who America, what America, who is America. 
America is a person or a land. I don't know. I was only five years old. But I found out he went somewhere. So, little after that, about six, six seven years of age, I used to walk about one mile to the post office. And it, it was my uh, routine. I go to post office. I sit there at the post office and waiting for the, uh, the mailman to come from the other main office to this local post office. Our postman's name is Matai or Matthew. We really know him by very close relationship with this guy. He walks miles and miles an hour because we live in village with all the mails. So I go there to carry mails. I'm hoping that there will be a mail from my dad so I can take it home to my mom. She will read it. When I ask him, is there any mail for me? He said, there's no mail. I go home with my head down. There's no mail. You've been receiving mail from the Lord for the last several years in your life, messages from your dad. But word of the Lord says, therefore, we must pay closer attention to what you have heard, lest we drift away from it. The mailman doesn't make a difference. The mail is what makes the difference. We give importance to the word of God here every Sunday morning. Word of God will keep you strong. Word of God will sustain you. Word of God will encourage you. Word of God will encourage you. Word of God will wash you. Word of God is powerful. It's quicker than two-edged sword. It will do an operation in your life if you allow him. No surgery, no surgeon can do some operation, but the word of God can do that operation in your life if you allow the word of God to come deep in your heart this morning. What does the writer say when he said about uh, uh, keep the word in your heart that you will not drift away? As we experience salvation through Jesus, we are we claiming we are children of God. We must not become careless about our personal commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must have a commitment saying, Lord Jesus, you are my savior. I live for you. The commitment is what the Lord is looking. What is the word drift away means? When Ap Ap Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrew, chapter 2, verse 1, it says that, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which you have heard lest at any time we should lest at any time we should let them slip I was reading from a, a different translation therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we heard lest we drift away so what is the drifting away means picture a ship in the ocean and, and the, picture, the picture of a ship and is slowly drifting away from a safe harbor and continuing to go into the deep depth of the ocean until it comes to a place where it just go without control, wandering, and it wrecks someplace. It was supposed to be in the safe harbor, but slowly, slowly drifted away. It ended up wrecking. That's what Paul is saying here. To avoid the wreck in our, our walk of life, our walks, in the Christian journey, to avoid the wreck in, our, in, your, in your life, we must pay close attention to the word of God. Three things I'll point out to you this morning. To avoid the wreck, you must pay close attention to the word of God, number one. Number two, to avoid the wreck in your life, you must have a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. To avoid the wreck in your life, allow the Holy Spirit to lead your life day by day. When the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is your helper. Holy Spirit is your teacher. Holy Spirit is your guide. Let the guide lead you when you don't know which way to go. Yes, but let not your life wreck in the middle of the ocean. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Uh, the writer says verse 1. Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So the writer who is writing and saying that, run a race with patience to reach your, reach your goal. There you will be successful. What is, the, what is the end result of reaching goal? I'd like to talk about that in a few minutes. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our, of our faith. He is the one started faith in your life. He will complete it. Trust Jesus Christ this morning. No one can take away that faith the Lord Jesus Christ implanted in your heart. Trust Jesus this morning. You may face many distractions in life that you can quickly go away from faith, but just focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
do not focus on the distractions but focus on the lord jesus christ if you focus on the distraction comes in your way it will help it will avoid your life from reaching the goal it will not help you to reach the goal you must not lose your vision you must have a vision of your call in your life you must have that vision i tell our children in this church and my children i any any children i talk to in our church when they finish uh, uh, high school or going to college or uh, or children going to school when i personally talk to them i tell them even my children even i was talking to steven the other day when he finished graduation from high school i said focus on one thing and go for that don't change your goal you must have a set goal in your life don't change this subject to that subject to this subject you will never succeed you will never graduate you must have a set goal in your life have a vision this is what i want to be and you, god will help you and pray about that and the holy spirit will help you to reach that goal same way with our christian life we have a set goal in our life the moment you became a child of god our goal is to have that closer walk with the lord jesus christ study the word of god to give us encouragement study the word of god that will take you away from the filthiness of the word there's a word that i heard word of god keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the word of god if you are not keeping the word of god in your heart there is problem bible says in psalm 119 that i that thy word i kept in my heart that i may not sin against you this is why we ask the children to study the word of god daily and i want to hear these children in our church will come and with with a new bible verse every sunday morning i don't accept the repeat repetition of the word you come with the last sunday word this sunday i will not accept that you need to learn a new you have one week to study a new word my children have to study new verses every day in their life i'm only asking you to study one verse a week because if you keep that treasure in your heart you will not sin you will have a, a goal you will have a vision because the god of uh, god's word will protect you god's word will encourage you god's word will keep you away from sin so you must not lose your vision as i i, I tell our children same way as our christian life a set goal for the future proverb chapter 29 verse 18 says where there's no vision the people perish why people are falling away why people are perishing because they have no vision in their life they have no set they don't even know what they are doing why are you saying what you are saying i don't know why are you here i don't know what are you saying i don't know what i'm saying well they don't know what they are saying they don't know what they are doing because there's no vision correct vision will help you to reach the correct goal so it will be terrible for a runner in the olympics game running and not reaching the finish line or reaching the wrong finish line can you imagine a runner and you're watching and this person is running you think oh that person or he or she is going to reach the finish line but end up in the wrong place what a waste of time it is that's what paul is talking about i don't care whatever i accomplish in this world everything i count it as dung yes, a very wealthy man's son he is saying that none of the riches of this world i count it it doesn't matter i count all those as dung in my life reach the goal and to become more like jesus must be our purpose in our life do you have a purpose in your life a vision in your life the lord set a goal the lord already set your goal when you become a child of god even before the foundation of the world that's what bible teaches ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 we see something important written, written there i want to point out a couple ver, uh, verse uh, a couple words from that verse ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 in him this is a new king james version i'm reading in in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him in a, a king james version in whom in whom and in him are same thing so it says in him we have been obtained an inheritance that's a past tense it's already given to you inheritance obtained an inheritance that means you possessed an inheritance and also you have been predestined those are the kind of word people the theologians make confusion to the poor people but you when you study that simple english you will understand what that means verse 11 says in him in other words in christ jesus you and i have obtained an inheritance inheritance that means you already received an inheritance in jesus this is our finishing point 
So continuing from the last uh, Sunday, the, uh, the Apostle Paul was telling us he accomplished many things in this world, but none of the thing, things matter. He just wanted to forget about all the things that happened. He just wanted to go forward. So verse 3, the same chapter, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, one, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly place in Christ Jesus. That is written in past, te- past tense. That means, blessed be God, our Father, our, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us. That means you have been blessed. You are a blessed person. And you are being blessed with all the spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That's what Bible says. That means you have received the inheritance and the blessing from heaven. This is just like uh, uh, the Lord told the Israelites uh, when they were in uh, Egypt. They were slaves. And the Lord said, I am going to take you to the promised land, the land, the promised land I already gave you. They were, they were slaves and the Lord already gave them the promised land. All they have to do is just go there and, and possess it. Same way, you have been received all the heavenly blessings, all the spiritual blessings in, through Christ Jesus. You have received an inheritance through Lord Jesus Christ. You have been predestined by God the Father to receive that. You have already been received. So what happened to the Israelites is they did not reach there to get that uh, uh, blessings that was given to them. And maybe I'll come back to that in a few minutes. So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, Paul is saying that we have been predestined according to the purpose of him. Let us look at the word predestined this morning. What is predestined means? Very simple. Don't have to go through dictionary. Let me explain. Everybody listen to me for a moment. I will explain. You have, have a heart of hearing. Pre means before. Destiny means the end point or final goal. So in other words, God, you, you have been predestined. God set your destination before the foundation of the world. All you have to do is go possess it. People take it wrong. People don't understand what a predestination means. What it means is the Lord already gave you the prodigal son, the example I use, that father have given him the inheritance that he is supposed to have. He took it and wasted it away. But even then when he came back, he had more inheritance in the father's place. If you wasted your time, believe that this morning you've been predestined by God in the uh, heavenly places before the foundation of the world. He knew about you. He knew your first name. And he knew what is your going to be last name. So God set your destination before the beginning. Before the beginning of creation. That's what that means. You don't have to go through the theological study or, or uh, some of the other big theologians. So if you study verse 4, it will make it more clear for you. Take a look at verse 4. In the same chapter. Just... Okay, another translation. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, our God knew your end from the beginning. Before the foundation of the world, he has chosen you, and our God knew what is going to happen to you before the beginning. Word of the Lord says, God, mighty God knows our end even before we begin our journey. He knows the end from beginning. Before the foundation of the world, he has cho- chosen you. Book of Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, make it a little more clear to you. It says, God Almighty, he is declaring the end from the beginning. He knows everything where it's going to go to, even before it starts. In other words, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 27 says, For the Lord of hosts has purposed, he has purposed, and who shall cancel it? And his hand has stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In other words, our God has a purpose for you. Nobody can cancel their purpose. It's very important. So, that person that I'm speaking to about uh, giving up life about you are not successful this morning. Just at least start a new beginning today. If you are that one, you can send me a private message also. At least that will encourage my faith. 
So I, I, I prayed about this. I said, Lord, should I say it or not? If I say it, let it be the truth. I don't want to just come and make a show of something. I, it, it came to me when I was standing there. That person, I want to say, you will be successful if you just give up what you're doing and go forward. Hearing the call of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has a great plan for your life. No one can cancel it. Romans chapter 8 verse 30 says, Moreover whom he did predestinate, them also called. And whom he called, them he justified. And whom he justified, them he glorified. Look at the process. I said God has a great plan for your life. No one can cancel it. And because the Lord have predestined for you the Things of you, things about you. So you have a call in your life, accept the call. And those who are called, if you receive that call and accept the call, and you will be justified, no matter what you have done. You don't even have to come and say, Father, I am sorry for all I have done. Before the word came out of the prodigal son's mouth, the father took him in. The Father's loving arms are open this morning. So them who are justified, they are also glorified. What is all means? It's very simple. Don't go think that it's very complicated theology. It's very simple. Verse 28 and 29. And we know that all things put together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God made the call and if you receive the call and you are accepted, all things work together for good. Because yes, you are in the plan of God. Nobody can cancel that plan. And then for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among my many brethren. So I will translate that for you in a few moments. Those who are called according to the purpose before the beginning of the world, God has set your final destiny to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says. Do you get it? What a simple meaning that is. So people say, oh, predestined. Oh, I cannot be there because I cannot accept the Lord because he already predestined, predestined a whole bunch of people. I'm not included. That's not what it means. You are included. It's up to you to go into that ship or not. The ship is going to go. I always say, the train will go from this point to that point. It's up to you to get on board or get off board. If you get on board, you will get your destiny. If you get off, you will miss the destiny. That's simple as that. God has planned that train for you. It's up to you. He's calling everyone with a wide open arm say, come on, the, come on, everybody on board. And if you are on board, don't worry what happens. The train may go through curvy road. Maybe go up and down some hill and some valleys. But don't worry the hills and valleys. As long as you are in that, and, and in that ship, in that, in that train, the train will make sure you will end up in the destiny. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So those who are called according to the purpose before the beginning of the world, God has set your final destiny to be what? Conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what simple language says. Uh, they are called being glorified. Justified and glorified. The glorious body of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not still sure about that. Take a look at uh, the epistle of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. Beloved. Beloved brothers and sisters. Now we are the sons of God. Sons means sons and daughters of God. That the moment you accept Jesus Christ, you are the child of God. Now you are the child of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. It is predestined for you to be like him. You, if you can get there, you will be like him. It's up to you to get that place there. Finally, we shall be like him when we reach our goal. We must not lose sight of this. Our focus must be the finish line. That's what Paul is saying. I just don't care what happens. I just want to go forward. I want to reach my destiny. I always use the example of Israelites. I'm going to use it one more time. Hopefully uh, you are not tired of listening. The tall leaders of Israel 
Moses selected and sent them to go check, find out the promised land. They are at the border of the promised land. All these millions of people, they came close to the borderline. And Moses said, just go. Twelve of you go and come back. They went, twelve of them went to the promised land. Okay, in, in short summary, all twelve of them saw the promised land. All twelve of them saw the big giants in that land. All twelve leaders saw the land that flows with milk and honey. But ten of them lost focus of God's promise. What did God promise? I am taking you in this train. You are, as long as you are in this train, you just go along with me. I will make sure you reach there. So when you came to the border, 10 decided, no, 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 God's promise will not happen. They said, this land will eat up people. There are giants in the land. We cannot possess the land. But two of them saw everything through the eyes of God, the promises of God. They said, yes, God is with us. The, the, the ten of them, they lost sight of the almighty God who is with them and the Lord is leading them. They forgot the train is not run by them. They are not running the train. They are just on board the train. Sometimes the problem with us, we think we are the one running the engine. You are not running the engine. You are just inside in the compartment. As long as you are inside the compartment, the engine driver will take you. Don't try to drive the, the train, the God's train. Let him drive. We, we see the bumper sticker, God is the co-pilot, but then still time comes, you are the pilot. Uh, of course, yeah, God is the co-pilot. <laughs> you are the chief pilot, <laughs> the captain. When you go through difficult circumstances in your life, your focus must be your finish line. Three things I want to talk about before I conclude my talk. Number one, knowing your set goals, set priorities in your life. A lot of people, they don't have any priorities in their life. But when you know the set goal, once you have the good knowledge about the, the final line, I am going to be like my Jesus. I want to get there. And you will set your priorities. What is good, what is not good. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, Paul is saying that redeeming the time because the days are evil. In other words, he is saying, Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is, meaning making the best of your time. Knowing your goal will help you to overcome challenges in your life. That's point number two. If you know the uh, uh, set goal, it will help you to overcome the challenges that comes in your life. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. Paul is saying something about what happened in his life. Many things happened for Paul. And Paul went through shipwreck, Paul went through stoning, Paul went through prison experience. He went through all kinds of difficult challenges in his life. But verse 12, Philippians chapter 1, summarized the whole thing. He's saying that, but I would use, I, I would, you should be understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. What he's saying is that, my brothers and sisters, understand this. Whatever happened to me is happened only for to bring glory to the Lord, to expansion of or the furtherance of the gospel, to reach out others through the word of God, to establish churches in different places. This is what I was called. But the things happened is all was leading me to that place that God wants me to. So none of those things matter to him. He just wanted to say that I want to reach my uh, set goal again. Point number three, knowing your uh, goal in your, uh, in your life help you to go forward to reach your final destiny. The way of victory is pressing on to the finish even in the midst of difficult circumstances or harsh oppositions. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. You may face challenges in your life, but Paul is saying that for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So he understands in this body he is living, the body may decay and body may fall apart. It does not matter to me. At the ultimate goal is for me to reach my destiny there. I'll be successful reaching there. There I'll be like my Lord Jesus Christ. The eternal glory. So when he think about that, the weight of the eternal glory, none of the things matter. 
Our problem is all the things of this life is more matter than the things that is coming up. What does matter? What is matter in your life? Reaching there or left behind? You can accomplish everything in this world and if you don't have that, this doesn't matter. It's up to us. A simple example of getting on board the train is what we should be thinking about every day in our life. Am I on board with the Lord Jesus Christ? Am I going forward? Am I pressing forward in the midst of my difficulties? In the midst of uh, distractions? In the midst of my challenges? Um, my, where is my focus? This is what I tell the children going to school. What, the classes are not going to be easy for you. But focus on your set goal. You, your set goal is I want to be this. You will get that. So my nephew Stephen, I, whenever I get a chance uh, with, uh, with him, I'll tell him. When you go into college, Stephen, I want to tell you, don't think that the road is that easy for you. And next moment, say, I'm not going to study this, I'm going to change. Don't do that. Make sure you go for this and finish that. I always say that, you know, because I care for him. I don't go tell the people on the road. I tell the people here, because you are, I, all the children here, I feel like they are my children. You must make a decision where I want to end up, and that is the direction that is given by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I have a vision for that. I am going to go forward. And that is my set goal. Nobody could distract from me. Distraction come. Difficulty come. Challenges will come. But you just say, these are all small affliction. But when I think about the eternal glory, when I think about the final point, when I reach there, it's going to be a rewarding. Romans chapter 8 verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. There's a glorious day coming. There we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. When you get there, many things will happen. You will say, how did I come here? How come that person didn't come here? I am surprised he came here. These are the main three things will happen. Right? How did I make it? Why he didn't make it? Why he made it? <laughs> I thought he will not make it. That is the prodigal son, by the way. That is that one I was talking about. That prodigal son can make it. You can make it this morning. I want to encourage you, don't give up, you will be successful and every day of your journey is being watched by the Holy God from heaven. He set a finish line for you and he sent a help of the Holy Spirit. Paul knew the high calling in his life. He knew he had a, a great call in his life. I was going to speak about the calling uh, and election about us and according to the word of God, but I had to finish the second part of the first message that, that I spoke to you last Sunday. So his focus was the finish line. What is our focus? Some of you are focusing about what do I eat for lunch today? Huh? Podichor is good. Podichor means packed lunch. It sounds good, but think about the time you are spending here. Have a heart of hearing. It may help you the next day or next year in the future. So Paul a great man of God. He had a call, a vision that was given at the gate of Damascus. From that vision, he is saying to King Agrippa one day, I have not deviated from the vision, original vision the Lord has given to me. Have you been deviating from the vision that the Lord has given? I know a lot of people, they deviated from the set goal. They never accomplished things in their life. This moment, at least you can start a, a, a new. Just say, I am going to just forget about everything that happened. I am going to have a fresh start. I am going to go to my father's house. I'm going to give you a chance for to, you to come back to the Lord in a moment by uh, uh, making, that, uh, 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 making the decision in your life. Accepting the call of the Lord Jesus Christ. So our focus in life must be to the, uh, fin the finishing point or the, 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 to finish the, the race and uh, reach our set goal in our life. If you are wavering and wondering and you are not sure about your finish line, ask the Holy Spirit to help you this morning. Holy Spirit is your helper. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you not to focus on distractions comes in your way, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to reach your set goal according to God's standard. I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet this morning, those who are watching me at home, and if that person who is uh, in so much in a distress that you want to give up your life, I'm going to ask you to also to watch me. 
I'm not just saying for the sake of saying it. I'm just saying because the Lord loves you so much. Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I'm coming back to you. If you do it, he will accept you. So I will come back to help you make that sinner's prayer. And to, if any one of you are uh, just fallen away from faith, I will also give you a chance for you to come back. After the worship team will sing a song. May God bless you through this word. It's all you gotta just be strong And it's a fight just to keep it together Together I know you think that you are too far gone But hope is never lost Hope is never lost Hold on, don't let go oh, Hold on, don't let go Just take one step closer Put one foot in front of the other You'll get through this Just follow the light in the darkness you're gonna be okay I'm with you we're singing this to somebody I know it's hard you gotta just be strong and it's a fight just to keep it together together I know you think that you are too far gone Hope is never lost Hope is never lost oh, Hold on, don't let go yeah. Hold on, don't let go Just take one step closer Put one foot in front of the other get through this just follow the light in the darkness you're gonna be okay so just take one step closer put one foot in front of the other you'll get through this just follow You're gonna be okay Just take one step closer Put one foot in front of the other You'll get through this Just follow the light in the darkness You're gonna be okay One foot in front of the other You'll get through this Just follow the light in the darkness You're gonna be okay You're gonna be okay The giving up in this life is the worst thing you can do But if you make a decision, Lord, I'm not going to give up you carried me this much, I'm going to go forward. Yes. I don't want to say this, I, I struggled over there. I, I said, I'm not going to say it, I don't want to make me look like a prophet. I don't want to be known as a false prophet, so I'm not going to say this, but I could not. I have to say this to that person who is watching me, to say to you, don't give up. Don't say that I'm not successful. You may not, you feel like you're not successful. But the Lord knows all about you. Yes. You're going to be okay, as we were, the team were singing. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming back to you. Yeah. If you gave up in your life, you are a backslider. You say, Lord, I am sorry for turning away from you. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry for turning my back on you. I'm coming back. 
if you have never accepted jesus christ as your personal savior this is a golden opportunity for you to accept him because everything glittering is not gold you may see a lot of things out there i had to say that line also because that also came to me to say that you everything that shines is not gold everything glittering is not gold and you are running after glittering things that's fake but the lord has promised eternity i'm going to ask you to accept jesus christ call this morning because paul said i know my heavenly call and a high call hopefully one of these days i can preach to you about the calling in your life i studied to preach about that today but it didn't happen till yesterday morning i was going to preach about the high calling but then it changed to the second part of this i know because god care for many people out there to know that you need to reach your destiny your destiny is more important so would you pray with me this morning if you are that person i'm just going to ask you just commit to your life don't worry about who and who is next to you even don't worry about that you just have that heart to heart talk with the lord if you are never made the sinner's prayer i'm going to ask you to pray i'm going to help you to pray that prayer lord jesus i thank you for loving me i thank you that you came to this world to save sinners and i am one of that sinner i am a wretched sinner i am ready to give up but because of this word encourage me i am giving my life over to you i am sorry for my sin wash me with the precious blood that you shed on the cross of calvary i accept your salvation and accept your call please take me in I thank you that you accepted me. I thank you that you forgave my sin. Father, I thank you that you wrote my name in the book of life. In Jesus name. If you prayed that prayer, this call you are born again, you became a child of God. And you accepted the high call in your life. Now onwards, press forward to go to the set goal to re- receive that reward just to be like Jesus. If you are a person who has been a backslider you once knew Jesus Christ but living a worldly life this morning you want to give your life back to the Lord just like that prodigal son came back just come back to him and say Lord I'm coming back I am sorry for my sin pray that prayer Father I thank you that your loving arms are wide open I am sorry that I ran out from your presence into that wicked world thinking that all that glittering was gold Lord I'm coming back I'm sorry for being where i was but coming back to you and thank you for your loving strong arms are stretch for me i thank you that you receiving me i repent of my sin and coming to you i thank you that you heard my prayer in jesus name if you prayed that prayer you are turned back and accepted by the lord in heaven and your name will not be erased and i'm going to pray for you father i praise and i thank you for these two categories of people who prayed that prayer lord i pray that your loving arms may come, continue to protect them and keep them strong i pray that you bless everyone who heard the message this morning help them to keep on pressing even when there are distractions in their race that race is test of faith that is in their life but in the test of faith help them to pass the test don't allow them to slowly drift away Lord help them to be on board that they can reach their destiny. I thank you for your powerful word that is given to us as Paul have made a stand that I am going to forget about the things that happen but I am going to go forward to finish my race. Lord I thank you that you spoke to us through the word for the last couple of weeks. We praise you and we thank you because you are a loving God. And I thank you Holy Spirit for knowing our heart and speaking to us. and i we all receive this word in jesus name i pray blessings upon all those who he- heard the word i bless them all in the name of father son and holy spirit we praise him and thank you in jesus name i pray amen may the love of god the father the grace of the lord jesus christ communion of the holy spirit abide with us now and forever amen